I wanted to commence the last part of our ceremony with thanking some of the most important people to us and all of Yehudi. Uh, firstly, I believe that we have the, uh, the Rabbi and the Rebbitson from Tallahassee. Where are you, Rabbi Jacob Yudas Khan? Just stand up real quickly if you can. Right? I mean, the man wears a Batman on his yarmulke because he's, he's Superman and bat amazing. And although they couldn't be here tonight, we'd like to thank the Golub family from University of Florida out in Gainesville. We truly appreciate them. Moving on down in geography, we have Superman himself and his amazing wife. We have Rabbi Abisror at Rebbitzin Tamar Abisror at UCF. I want to hear it. Let's go. I want to hear it. Let's go. Let's go. And their delicious little Juju, Judah, we love him, he's delicious. Thank you guys so much, we appreciate that. And finishing off the campus, we have our newest Rabbi and Rebbitson with the British accent, because that sounds more sophisticated, Rabbi Abinson from FIU, amazing. And Batsheva Abinson, we love you guys, thank you. And in our millennial division, we have uh, Rabbi and Rebbitson, Yaakov and Sarah Florence of Wynwood, the most inspiring, amazing people you'll ever meet in your life. That's where I want to go for Shabbos. And the newest member of the millennial division, we have Rabbi Shlomo and Rebbitson Plotzker. In Miami Beach in the Yehudi Hub, they have the most amazing Shabbos. She makes the best food. I eat it when everybody goes to bed. It's delicious, right? Mavish, an amazing, amazing team. But there's really one group that we must, must, must thank. We must know where we come from. We must understand why we're here tonight. And before we move on with the program, there's only one group that gave Yehudi the seed money to start in Miami Beach. Only one group that has given us two million dollars up until this point, and still running by the way. There's only one group that has agreed not only to match our current uh, six different venues, but let's just say if we would open a seventh, or maybe up to 12, they even have committed that they would love to grow with us. All of the Yehudi students, please stand up if you can, if you want, right? Let's give a little Baruch Hashem to Olami, to Rabbi Avi Kassel, to Gidon Shoshan. Give a little Baruch Hashem. I don't hear you. It's for you, Olami. We love you. Okay. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Thank you so much, thank you. Okay, please put your right hand in the air and just say the word Ani. And then just clap yourself on the heart and say Yehudi. Because all of us are Ani Yehudi. But the question becomes, who is Yehudi? Where is Yehudi? What does it mean? Where did it come from? There was only one person in Jewish history who was ever called Yehudi. It was a man that lived during the story of Purim. And in Purim, Ahasuerus, the king, invited the Jewish nation to attend a party. And at the party, he was going to ridicule the Jewish downfall. They just destroyed the temple and he was going to wear the clothing of the priest and drink from the vessels of the temple and he invited the Jewish people to join in the celebration of their downfall. And posed this very difficult question, do we offend the king or do we participate? The Jewish nation chose to participate. But only one man stood strong one man stood tall, one man said, there are values that I have that I'm not willing to compromise. There is an identity that I connect to that I will never forget, no matter what it takes. And his name was Mordechai HaYehudi. Because what it means to be Yehudi, it means to stand strong, to stand tall, to have values that you won't compromise, to have an identity that you want to build. It means to learn, and it means to make a growing impact on everybody around you. 
That's what it means to be Yehudi. We have only given the Ani Yehudi Award to one of the recipients, and that was Senator Joseph Lieberman five years ago because of his impact on the Jewish people in America. And it's taken us five years to find another family who was worthy to receive the Ani Yehudi Award. I remember the story how it started, David and Shari. <laughs> About 15 years ago, I think, I was sitting learning in Rabbi Zweig's yeshiva, just enjoying myself. And all of a sudden, this guy walks in with his teenage son. You know, and not just like the average teenage son, like the obnoxious type of teenage son, right? And the guy walks up to me and he goes, you know, hey, Rabbi, we got a problem. I'm like, talk to me, brother, what's up? He says, you know, Rabbi, my son doesn't believe in God and he's 15 years old. And I look over at the kid, and the kid goes like this. <laughs> Brittany, you like that, right? So uh, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I see the problem. <laughs> so, uh, so, so dad says, you know, Rabbi, you think you could uh, solve the problem? You know, and uh, so I said, you know, I'm just a simple Jew. Come on, come on, come on, come on. But I said, why don't we just, uh, why don't we learn something together and let's see what happens. So dad starts to turn and walk out and I said, where do you think you're going? And he says, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> but we sat down today, that, that day, and we started to study Torah. And what's amazing about the Lombardi family is that when you study with the Lombardis, everything they do, they want to grow. They want to make a larger impact. So it started with David and Danny. And then all of a sudden, at some point later, you know, David introduces me to this lovely young lady, Brittany, and she's learning Torah with us. And I said, Danny, you don't want to let that one get away from you. And thank God, at their chuppah last, last summer, it was beautiful in upstate New York. They have a beautiful Jewish marriage. They study Torah together. Absolutely beautiful nachas. So proud of everybody. But with Lombardis, that's not enough. Then, of course, it's growing to Brian. And by the way, Brian brought me a very nice young lady that we were learning Torah with Rachel, of course, right? And Brian, if I were you, I wouldn't let that one get away either. All right. And I'm available next summer. Okay, but anyway, it's okay, it's okay. No pressure, it's all good, it's all good. And now we're studying Torah, right? But that's not enough of the Lombardis because they want to grow, more impact, more. And then they bring me the, the loveliest, nicest young lady. And this is Brooke. And I said, wow, how did you grow up in the same family as those two guys? I mean, you are the nicest, sweetest person. But it's not enough of the Lombardis. So yeah, maybe their three children and I study Torah in their office every Tuesday night, but that wasn't enough. Then they had to bring their friends and Johan and their neighbors and adults and the next thing I know, like everybody's studying Torah in the Lombardi's office because they believe in growing. They want to make an impact. My friends, the only family that we ever found that truly was Yehudi was the family that stands on the principles of impact, of growth. David and Shari, what you do is not for yourself. It's for your family, it's for your children, and it's for all of your friends and your whole community. And it's so special because now that you have learned, you have spread this to so many more people. And what's amazing is it doesn't matter what you observe or how religious you are. Everybody can study Torah. It's for all of us. We can all be inspired. We can all learn and we can all grow. Everybody, please get ready to stand up and put your hands together for the second recipient of the Ani Yehudi Award. Please welcome David and Sherry Lombardi. Hey!